Hey there, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. Today we're going to be talking about Fibonacci retracements. Great way to identify, if you're looking at a uh, stock chart, a great way to identify some potential support and resistance levels using the Fibonacci sequence, Fibonacci numbers. So today, it's all about using the Fibonacci numbers on one example, the chart of Visa. So I actually first learned about Fibonacci numbers when I was studying music back in college because you learned all about the mathematical relationships between different musical notes and tones and how that relates to the Fibonacci sequence. I would love to create a video someday explaining that in detail, probably outside the scope of the Market Misbehavior channel, but if you look elsewhere on YouTube or Google, I'm sure you'll find plenty of great, uh, great descriptions of that uh, relationship between the Fibonacci numbers, Fibonacci sequence, and music. But when I was introduced to financial analysis and learned about technical analysis and was shown that Fibonacci numbers were applied in finance, I was fascinated. And what I've learned over my career is a lot of traders used uh, Fibonacci retracements. Uh, early on in my career, I got to spend time with traders that would use Fibonacci retracements on short-term price charts. And they would identify potential points where prices would swing or most likely swing based on the Fibonacci retracement level. So today, we're actually going to look at one particular example using the chart of uh, Visa and, uh, and identify how the Fibonacci retracement uh, levels can be used to identify potential support levels here going through uh, between now and year end. Before we get to the chart, I just want to remind you, if this sort of thinking about investor decision making using charts and technical analysis is of interest to you, I hope you'll hit subscribe. It would be great to have you along this ride with us. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We would very much appreciate that back. Finally, put a comment below the video. Have you found Fibonacci retracements to be helpful in your trading, your investing? Yes or no, and why? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get to the chart. All right, so here we are looking at the chart of Visa, and you can see the uh, last two years uh, using the daily open, high, low, close in the top. We have two moving averages in blue, the 50-day in red, the 200-day, and then these green lines are the Fibonacci retracement levels we'll get to in just a moment. Below that, we have RSI, which is a measure of price momentum, and we have the relative strength, looking at the relative performance or the ratio of Visa versus the S&P 500. So if this line is going up, the stock is outperforming. If the line is going down, you can see it's underperforming. Let's look at what the chart of Visa has actually done. Visa bottomed back here in March. Now I'm adjusting the data. So it might look a little different depending on uh, if you're looking at it on a different platform, but uh, this is adjusted data, meaning we're adjusting for dividends, which is a great way to take the impact of the price dividend out and focus just on investor behavior, which is what we're trying to do. So the low in March was just below uh, around 132, 133. You can see the stock peaked out in July of uh, this year around uh, just above 250. And now we've started to come back. So this is a chart that's clearly rotated from accumulation phase to distribution phase. And this is why I'm able to declare that factually and not saying that's an opinion. That is just a, a fact based on the performance of the chart. An uptrend is a pattern of higher highs and higher lows, which is what we saw through July. We then have seen a pattern of lower lows and lower highs. So the low prices keep getting lower. The high prices keep getting lower. That is a chart in a downtrend. We have broken down through the 50-day moving average, which we did in August. We retested that, attempted to break out in October, but failed. We've broken through the 200-day moving average as well. After bouncing off of that in September and October, we gapped down below the 200-day and now have remained below there as well. The relative strength index, the RSI, has gone from a bullish phase where the RSI remains above 40 and tends to get overbought to more of a bearish phase where it'll get down to the oversold level and rarely get above 60 on any sort of price bounce. So that rotation, September, October, November, really illustrates the rotation from accumulation to distribution. We're gonna get back to the relative strength, the relative performance at the bottom here in a minute, but let's look at the Fibonacci retracement level. So the way that you apply Fibonacci retracements is you take a stock that's had a uh, that, that has had a pretty good run, right? A pretty good uptrend, and you apply the Fibonacci retracement. Start at the low price, which is the low in March of 2020, and you take the high price from July of 2021. And what you're basically saying, if this is the beginning of the move last March, if this is the end of the move in July, what key levels might I expect between those two extremes? And these come from the Fibonacci sequence. 61.8% is the most important level, followed by 38.2%. Those are the key turning points. And this is based off of the Fibonacci sequence of numbers. More often than not, once you establish that range, you can expect support around 38.2%, 61.8%. Now, there are some secondary levels that a lot of people will use, things like 50%, 76.4, 20, and, and a number of different ones. 
I've eliminated those. I actually don't use those secondary levels because what I've found is when you use Fibonacci retracements, and I have found videos on YouTube that, that I think do a, a sadly a poor job of making this point. If you have too many lines on a chart, you will find patterns that are probably not there. You will find a reason to, to make, a, make a trade and a reason to justify a trade, which is really called confirmation bias, probably more than anything, as opposed to something that's a little more systematic and a little more disciplined. So what I tend to do is just look at the really uh, basic classic levels using Fibonacci retracement. So I have three levels indicated, 38.2, 50%, and 61.8. So what has just happened recently with uh, Visa is concerning because we bounced off of the 38.2% level in November. And basically what happens is once you establish the low and once you establish that interim high, the question is where might we find support as we come lower? So that's when you apply the Fibonacci retracements. That's when you start looking at these levels. You can see that 38.2% level is here, just around 205, 206. We bounced off of that level in early November and now have broken below there. So the fact that Visa has now gone below that first Fibonacci level is concerning. So how does this work? You then start to look to the next level. So what that means is if the first level is broken, your next downside objective is the 50% line around 192. If we would break that, the next level would be around 178, which is a 61.8% retracement based on that uh, price range. What's really interesting on this chart is if you look to the left, you'll see that these Fibonacci levels actually coincide very well with price levels where the stock has actually already found support. So that 38.2% level, which we bounced off of in early November around 206, that lines up really well with the level we saw here in uh, late March before the big push higher into the uh, early summer months. The 50% level around 192 lines up very, very well with uh, this support uh, here in late January, the last time that the stock had bounced off of its 200-day moving average. If we would break that, we get down to the 61.8% level. You can see that was a significant low uh, there in October. In October, November is when the market itself was actually breaking higher. Visa actually lagged behind quite a bit and really didn't get going until the first quarter of 2021. So basically what the Fibonacci levels tell you, I would argue, is that we have now uh, broken the first Fibonacci support level. We bounced off of it, which should be expected, but now we've broken it, which means you're first downside objective now should be around 192. If that holds, that would make sense because that lines up with previous support as well. But if that breaks, you go down to the next level just below 180, around 178. And that lines up with the low from October of 2020. What's interesting though on this chart using Fibonacci retracements, if you look at the very bottom, here's the reason why Visa, while the price uh, structure had been in accumulation mode through, uh, through July, here's why it hasn't been a great bet. Look at the relative strength on Visa. The fact that this line has gone down fairly consistently tells you that it's not just whether or not this is a good chart, it's whether this is a good chart, this is a good chart relative to other stocks that you may buy or, or own at any given point. The fact that the relative strength line has consistently gone down means this stock has been consistently underperforming the S&P 500. I would much rather own stocks where the relative strength line is going up. Uh, one of my uh, you know, peers in the industry, Tom Boley, said, if you want to outperform the S&P 500, you need to own stocks that are outperforming the S&P 500. The uh, stocks where this line is going down is, is not the way that you're going to outperform the benchmark. So think about it. In the last six months, you've seen Visa rotate to a downtrend. It's breaking support, breaking moving averages, pushing lower, lower lows and lower highs. The relative strength line has gone down fairly consistently in the last four or five months. This is as the S&P and the NASDAQ the Dow, others are making new all-time highs. Visa is well below its previous highs, down uh, you know, 20 odd percent on an absolute basis from 250 to just around 200. So overall, we have bounced off the fifth, first Fibonacci level, I think broken that. And now you're looking at the further support, further downside targets using Fibonacci levels and also previous levels of price support. So that's it. That's how we would apply the Fibonacci retracement levels to the chart of Visa. And the goal there is not just to talk about Visa, the individual stock, but to think about how to apply Fibonacci levels. A couple of things I would say. Number one, it's important to use the extremes. So you'll notice I use the March 2020 low, the July 2021 high. There's a reason why I use those extremes. A lot of people will pick some really meaningless levels to apply the Fibonacci retracements. You're not doing it right. You need to pick the extremes because the idea is that is the framework with which you can uh, analyze the chart and analyze the uh, price behavior, which is really the behavior of the, of the investors. The other thing we, uh, we highlighted in this video is how you can line up Fibonacci levels when they line up with traditional support and resistance. That means, suggests that they're even more uh, meaningful, which is why this chart of Visa, I think, has a lot to share right now using Fibonacci retracements with con uh, con traditional support and resistance levels. 
If this sort of uh, thinking about investor decision making using charts and technical analysis is of interest, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot more great content to share with all of you. Also, give the video a like if you appreciated it. We'd very much appreciate that back. Finally, put a comment below the video. What other technical indicators can I share with all of you? What would you like me to uh, describe in a little more detail and share examples? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to follow up with you all soon. That's it for Market Misbehavior. I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe. We'll talk to you again soon.